we got Doug Bell on the line talking Alabama football. Uh, Doug has been covering uh, sports there in Alabama for a long, long time. You tell us, 1987, Doug. Yeah, 1987, when I got here, Coach Curry was the head coach at Alabama. Uh, and, of course, uh, Coach Dye was at Auburn. And Coach Curry could never beat Coach Dye. And that led to him leaving ultimately for Kentucky. And then Gene Stallings came in. And uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, then Alabama kind of went – uh, on the dark side for a few years until until they found Nick Saban. And now they're in a situation where, uh, Mark, there's no letting up. It, it really is a phenomenal situation when you think about it. Uh, and we've talked a lot about scheduling and the, and the current model. I mean, there is no let up for Alabama, especially when you have Nick Saban running the show. And as long as he's there and he's the guy that's uh, powering this engine, I mean, Alabama football is going to be elite for a long, long time. It really is. It, it is an incredible. And, you know, when you think about it, Mark, uh, the other day I, w- I was doing some research in the budget. You know, you think Ohio State and Oklahoma and Clemson, uh, these elite programs, Georgia, Alabama spends more in their overall budget than any of those programs by, by a large margin. And so, um, you know, the powers that be at Alabama wanted, and we're talking about, uh, Coach Bryant's son, Paul Bryant Jr., who's head of the Board of Trustees. I mean, he wanted Alabama to be the elite program in the country, bar, I mean, without any question marks. They got the right guy. It, it is the perfect situation, perfect storm at Alabama. Everything has come together, and that's why this program will never, ever. I mean, they, they stumbled against Clemson in the national championship game, but yet they did finish 14-1, and one, and they played for the national title the last four years, won two, lost two. Uh, it's not going to ease up any time in, in Tuscaloosa, that's for sure. So if you're an Alabama fan, enjoy it. I, I tell my kids who go to school there, Mark, I said, enjoy this because one day it's not going to be like that, and they don't believe it. And so uh, m- maybe it will last forever. I don't know. Yeah, they might actually go like 9-3 and three one year. Wouldn't that be just <laughs> the end of the world? Speaking of the yeah. end of the world, Doug, I've got to run to another conversation, but I really want to ask you about this. Uh, you mentioned the Clemson loss, and not just losing 31-28 on a last-second field goal, getting completely outplayed the second through fourth quarters and, yeah. and giving up 30 straight points. So the Alabama fans, the reasonable Alabama fans that I talk to that make comments to me, I could tell that they were very respectful of Clemson, respectful of the talent, thought this is going to be a good game, but there was really no fear factor. They, they assumed a win, and they tried to do it respectfully, but I could tell none of them considered losing that game. Uh-huh. And they get blasted off the field. So what is the vibe? Is it the sky's falling or that's an aberration? We're fine. Let's move on to 19. Well, I, I think, um, you know, that was one of those situations. If you go back and look at it, uh, it is an Alabama football team that uh, had a, the last six weeks. They were challenged. Uh, there's no question with that schedule. I mean, you know, you're throwing in LSU and Mississippi State and uh, Alabama and Georgia and Oklahoma was a tough team in the playoffs. Uh, they were spent. Uh, they were they were clearly spent when they got to the national championship game. And if you – Again, listen to what Coach Saban is saying now. Perhaps some of those coaches uh, let up a little bit too, who all who all have now departed uh, Alabama. And I think Clemson, on the other hand, Mark had the perfect storm. Um, they played Pittsburgh in the ACC championship, and Notre Dame was no challenge at all in the playoffs. So they were fresh, and they were extremely talented, and they showed that. And they exposed Alabama, who had a little weakness there in the secondary. The wide receivers at Clemson were – incredible and the quarterback had his best game and it was just it all came together so I think for Alabama fans I think they realize they got beat by a pretty darn good football team but they're anxious to play Clemson again are we going to see it again it wouldn't surprise me wouldn't yeah. surprise me they are the 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 top of the line of course Georgia and Alabama and uh let's see Ohio State and Oklahoma would be that next tier but they've got a little bit of work to do and of course Urban Meyer's no longer at Ohio State we'll see what Ryan Day has uh maybe he'll follow in the footsteps of a Lincoln Riley who picked up right where uh Bob Stoops left off and even raised the bar uh Doug Bell sports guy got to join him on Twitter and uh he is just uh, one of the best in the business Doug uh I'm glad that we could connect I appreciate the conversation and you stopping by Hey, Mark, anytime. Uh, it's been a long time. We've always talked about hooking up, and our schedules are kind of crazy. So uh, hopefully it'll be on sooner than later. Absolutely. Uh, you have a great day, Doug. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it very much.